I know, you're so cool. You've been using Mac OS X since Steve Jobs got his wisdom teeth out. But today I'm gonna show you five very advanced tricks for Mac, and I'm betting you haven't heard of at least one or two, or maybe all five of them. consider yourself a Mac power user, you probably use the screenshot function rather often. Shift Command 3 to grab your full screen, or Shift Command 4 to grab a specific selection. Now what you've also probably realized is that by default, these images are saved to your desktop in a PNG file. Now PNGs are great because they are very, very high resolution. However, the issue with them is that they're not very nice to your disk space. And most of the time we don't need a 17 megabyte image uh, to, to share to Facebook or Twitter. And I've seen a lot of people, you know, open the, the screenshot in preview, try to save as, as a smaller file, they'll change it to JPEG and then they compress the crap out of it and it just doesn't look good and it's a tedious, it's a pain. So what you can do to mitigate this entire issue is open terminal. Terminal can be found in Spotlight, very, very easy. And you type out the following command. Now, I should mention that all of the terminal commands listed in this video are pasted in the video description below. So check that out and that will give you the opportunity to even if you want, copy and paste them right into terminal without having to retype them out. So check that out, just wanted to let you know. But this is the command that would let you to change pretty much anything you want. Uh, you can change the type of the screenshot to uh, JPEG if you wanna go really, really easy on your disk space or TIFF if you wanna go over the top in terms of uh, resolution and pixel density. You could even do uh, PDF if you want to provide a simple, easy way for people to, to look at stuff on their phone or what have you. So let's change it to JPEG, right? We've changed it to JPEG. We're going to take a new screenshot. And now we can look at the properties of this file and we'll notice that it's very, very small. It's 2.2 megabytes. It still looks fantastic, if not pretty much equal in quality to the PNG file. See, very little difference, but I mean, very, very minimal on disk space. So I usually just leave it to JPEG, set it and forget it. It's a very easy way to not only use a more widely accepted file type, but shave down the enormous amount of space that screenshots are now taking. So this second trick is one that I'm using with a lot more frequency. Uh, let's say I'm sending sensitive information like credit card information or financial statements, and I don't want any prying eyes to be able to take access to it if they somehow get in the middle of it. Let's say I leave it on a USB drive or it goes through an insecure email inbox. It's nice to have stuff encrypted. And so it's really easy to encrypt any file or any archive on Mac OS X using terminal. So we're going to open terminal. And we have right here a PDF. Now this PDF is for my monitor's uh, manual, but we've called it FBI secret info because we're gonna pretend that it's really important information. So like I mentioned, we can use SSL from within um, terminal to encrypt and decrypt files. So again, all of this stuff is listed on the website, but we're going to say, okay, terminal, we're going to use OpenSSL to work on an encryption. So we type ENC. Then we need to tell it the encryption type. You can use anything you want, but the standard in the industry is AES 256-bit. It's very secure, very fast, it's, just, it's great, okay? We then need to tell the computer, okay, we want to encrypt a file using minus E. And then we need to give it our input and output files. So we're gonna type minus IN. Now our input file is obviously the file that we'd liked to encrypt. So instead of typing the path out, you can actually just drag the file you wanna use into the window and it will write off that path for you. So users, snazzy lab, blah, blah, blah. Yours is gonna be different, but the file extension at the very end is the file that you're trying to encrypt. Then we need to give it our output. So we're gonna minus O-U-T. And then what I like to do, again, instead of having to type out this whole directory is just drag that same file back in if you plan on saving it to the same folder and then just erase until you get to desktop or whatever file that the one you're converting is in. And then you can type out, uh, you know, encrypted, Dot .pdf, or if we wanted to, you know, trick people, uh, totally not important, <laughs> right? Dot .pdf. So it's now going to ask us for our password. Uh, you'd obviously want to type something very secure. I'm not going to, I'll type password. But you can see once I enter the uh, password and confirm it, there's a new file on the desktop. It's called totally not important dot PDF. Now this is our encrypted file. If I try to open it, it will not open. If I try to use something like, uh, oh, I don't know, text edit to open it, it's not gonna open either. Uh, it'll open and it'll just show this complete gibberish. So it's pretty cool because you've now really secured this file. So obviously you need to decrypt it at some point. We're gonna reorganize this desktop. So we've got the, 
the file that we need to decrypt now, let's say you've given it to your friend and you've called them over the phone with the password, or you are transferring it to another computer, you don't need this encrypted anymore, right? So we're gonna type out basically the same command. We type open SSL, we tell it that we're using encryption, we need to tell it AES 256 bet CVC because it doesn't know the encryption type. We need to tell it what it is. And then instead of typing minus E for encrypt, we need to type minus D for decrypt. Then we need to give it our input file, just like last time. So we'll drag the now encrypted file into the window. And then we need to give it our output file. And then we can, again, drag this in and erase it so that we can rename it. So the new file will be called decrypted.pdf. We press enter and it asks us for our password. Now, if we enter the password wrong, it's not going to work. But if we enter the correct password, then you'll see that decrypted now pops up on the desktop. So this is a new file that is the decrypted version of the encrypted version of the original document. It's a really, really great way to easily encrypt and decrypt stuff. It's super easy. It works across multiple computers without any hassle. I love it and you should too. So the Mac App Store is great, but it only checks for updates once every seven days, which if there's a, you know, a major security patch or an update to an application you use frequently, that's annoying to only be notified and updated every seven days. So using Terminal, we can change the frequency in which the Mac App Store checks for updates. So the integer on the end, this is the command. Again, it's on the website below. If you type out minus INT, that's our integer value. This is the number of days. So by default, it's seven days. Every seven days, the Mac App Store checks for a new update. If we wanted to make sure that it happened daily, all we have to do is type integer one and we're ready to go. Conversely, and this is not a good idea, but if you wanted to check the App Store never, you only want to check it manually, you don't ever want it to do anything for you, or perhaps you only want it to update you know, once a year, you could theoretically change the integer value to 365 and then it will only check once a year, but that's a bad idea. Uh, but you can change it out to two weeks or something if it's too often and it bugs you, but I choose to do it daily because why not have an update if it's there? So this fourth tip is one that probably many of you know. However, I've been using Mac OS X since the beta came out in the year 2000. And despite using it 16 years, uh, I didn't discover this trick until two years ago. And so it's a little embarrassing, but it's a very, very handy one. Uh, what I used to do and what many people do is they'll open system preferences and then navigate to the sound panel if they wanna change the output, say from headphones to a Bluetooth speaker or to the internal speakers or the input to change the microphone, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a very easy way to do this. Most people have the little volume control up here in the menu bar. However, if you hold down option as you click it, You'll notice that you can change the output device and input device on this pull down menu on the fly. It's really, really handy to be able to change stuff just immediately and not have to open system preferences. All right, so this last one I use a ton and it's really, really helpful. Let's say you are uploading a video to YouTube or downloading a video game from Steam and you don't want your computer to turn off in the middle of it or go to sleep. A lot of times you can open system preferences uh, go to Energy Saver and say, okay, never fall asleep. And then uh, you change all your settings, but that's a pain and you have to remember to change them back. And if you go on a long uh, trip for a week and a half, you don't want your computer to be sitting all day. It just, it's, it's not very good and it's a pain. There's a really easy way around this. If you open up Terminal and you type the word caffeinate, it will override anything that you have set in system preferences. So until I change uh, this command or close terminal, my computer will not apply an update, it will not turn off, it will not restart, it will do whatever it's doing until I tell it to stop. That's really, really easy. You can stop it by using Control C uh, or quitting terminal. Now let's say that you're going on a week long trip and you're uploading a YouTube video that you know is gonna take about two hours, but you don't want the computer to fall asleep. What you can do is type caffeinate, and then type minus U minus T to give it a time. And then we said two hours. So you have to type uh, how long you want it to stay awake in seconds. So there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. That's 7,200 seconds for two hours. So I type 7,200 seconds and this machine will now not fall asleep, not apply an update, not restart for 7,200 seconds. After 7,200 seconds, it will go to sleep. It will apply updates. It will just chill out so that you can go on your week and a half long vacation without your computer staying running in the background. It's a really great solution to be able to override your stock uh, energy saver preferences. Just wanted to remind you one last time, everything you need to know, all of the terminal commands in case you missed them in the video are pasted in the video description below. But other than that, if you liked this video, we would appreciate a like. If you thought it was not very good, then that other button seems to work okay too. But most of all, thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay snazzy.